I'm Tom Death, so you'll be very grateful I'm not going to say Thank you very much for coming uh, this evening, and uh, thank you to Sara for inviting me. My name is Paolo Squatriti. I'm a historian, so even more uh, likely to uh, engage in the past tense than Professor Parrish. I'm uh, uh, contemporaneously in the departments of history and Romance languages, and in uh, Pyt, and that was an attempt to um, to avoid uh, too much committee work. It actually multiplied the amount of committee work that I got involved. <laughs> I'm a specialist in uh, early medieval European history. That would be history that happened a long time ago, at least a thousand years ago. It's uh, what happened to Europe after the collapse of the Roman Empire. And um, for our purposes tonight, probably the two things that matter the most about what happened after the collapse of the Roman Empire was uh, that um, the role of the state becomes very, very small and demographic pressure on resources is reduced which sounds like uh, the dream world that um, a lot of environmentalists uh, imagine. Um, and the early medieval Europe, you could say, would be a test case of what it's like to have non-invasive states and a very light footprint of uh, humanity on it. Uh, but in fact, uh, the things that I study indicate that people, even when there are few and when their governments are pretty incompetent, are still able to uh, make pretty deep impact on the landscapes they inhabit and on the natural resources that they rely on. For example, here, one of my very favorite early medieval interventions on the environment is uh, Offa's Dyke, which is uh, an enormous, if you're generous with it, 140 kilometer long uh, ditch, uh, two meters deep, with an uh, ensuing pile of dirt on the other side, on one side of the ditch separating England from Wales, which was created at the end of the 8th century, so around the year 790 in um, Western England, not so far from Birmingham, actually. Uh, we heard about that earlier. And which changed the hydrology, changed the uh, ability of people to move their cattle, changed the ability of animals to migrate, and did all kinds of other things to an environment um, in England. Office Dyke is today a very, very pleasant um, hiking trail. If you want to spend a couple of very, very fun weeks um, in England, this would be a good thing to do. You can follow it from uh, north to south or south to north. I um, studied um, water at the beginning of my brilliant career. That was um, a long time ago, actually, in the 90s. And I could say that um, one thing I can claim is that I, I was a forerunner in environmental history. I, nobody in my field of early medieval Europe was interested in these subjects when I started. Now they are. There's many of them. And my second book is about trees, actually, not about water, and about chestnut trees and how the collapse of the Roman state and the collapse of uh, demography in Italy led to new ways of, engage, of people extracting resources from the land, no longer through agriculture, but instead through forestry. This is what that book's about. I do teach some environmental re relevant classes, right? Not all of them that I teach are environmental relative. And in fact, one thing I would observe is that classes that I teach which are popular are not the environmental ones, uh, that the large crowds of students show up for ordinary history classes and not for the environmental ones. But here's a listing of some that I've taught in the last decade or so. Um, in Romance languages, in Pite, and in history. And uh, that's all I have for you. 